Shalom. Today we are continuing on the in-depth look at understanding Hebrew verb structures. We remember that the vowel system, the vowel paradigm, will show us what tense the verb is, what person it is talking about, and what is the binyan. We have been working in the participle, and we must remember that there's only one form of the participle or the present tense in Hebrew, and that can mean I do, I do something every day, I am doing what I am doing right now. This is how we define these in English. I have been doing up until this point, I have been doing some action, and also it refers to the person, I am the one that does those things. So far we have broken down in quite uh, detail the pa'al forms of the participle. When we look at the chart of the binyanim, we see these other five, which are highlighted in yellow. All these participles will begin with a mem. So many times you see the mem as a noun prefix. It can be the noun for the person who's doing the action but it also might just tell us that it's a present tense, a participle verb. Remember that the participle has four forms, a masculine singular, a feminine singular, a masculine plural, and a feminine plural. We're going to start today with the PL form. There's a spelling with vowels and a spelling without vowels. The PL form uh, is a bit more intensive then the pa'al form, if, uh, if you have two verbs with the same root and they appear in the pl and the pa'al, they're going to be related. One is going to be a bit stronger than the other. The best example that I can give you is the root lamad, lamid, mem, dalad. In the pa'al form, it means to learn. In the pl form, it means to teach. We're going to start with a common verb that you know the root, davar, dalit, bet, resh. Very rarely appears in the pa'al, usually appears in the pl, and it means to speak. So the vowel structure, uh, including the mem prefix for the masculine singular, is midabair. So we have the mem prefix. We have the dalid with the patach. We have a dagish in the bet and the tsere. That's the masculine singular. The feminine is midaberet. You see that it's very similar to the full roots, the, the verbs where all the consonants are strong. They don't drop in or out. Remember we had a shomeret. This is the same form for the feminine and adds those two segles and the tav at the end. The masculine plural, midabrim, again, you can recognize the masculine plural ending. And the feminine plural, midabrot, for groups of women. Tanakh does have examples of all these forms in it. From Genesis 27.6, we see that uh, Rebecca is talking to Jacob, her son. And this is what she says, Hine shamati et avicha midaber el esav achicha lemor. Behold, I heard your father midaber. He is speaking to esav, your brother. In 1 Samuel 1.13, we have a singular feminine form. This is Hannah. She is at the temple. She is praying to herself, asking for a child, and uh, we read, hi midaberet al liba. And Hannah, she is speaking to her, her heart. Only her lips are moving, and then we remember that the priest thinks that she's drunk. The masculine plural in Exodus 6.27, talking about Moses and Aaron, and they are speaking to Pharaoh. Him, they, hamidabrim. Now remember when we have the hey in front of it, it's the equivalent of the definite article, the. So they are the speakers. This is referring to the people. But remember, it's a participle form. It's the same, it's the same form as the verb, the speakers. They are speaking to Pharaoh. 
in Isaiah 19.18. We're talking about Bayom Hahu. In that day, there will be five cities in the land of Egypt, Midabrot Svat Kana'an. They are speaking the language of Kana'an. Why is that feminine? Because cities are feminine, even though the plural looks masculine, Arim. So these are the cities, and they are speaking the language of Kana'an. Remember, we have these five uh, cases that uh, remain irregular in their own little irregular way. We will be covering a few of these. Some there are no examples for. And particularly the hollow verbs take a totally different form, so we won't be covering those for the PL. We're going to start with the Lamedchet verbs. This is Shalach, Shin Lamedchet. It means to send. In the PL, it's a little bit stronger, maybe to cast out. However, the same rules for the final Chet are applicable. So before, we would have just had the Mem, and we had mid da bear, and we had the patach and the tzere. But because of the chet at the end here, we get an extra patach. Um, so it's mishaleach. It's the same rule that we had in the pa'al for lokeach, zorea, shomea, all the verbs that are in a chet or ayin. They just have that extra patach. In the feminine, we see the same thing that the vowels convert to patach. Mishalachat, not it's not mishalechet, it's mishalachat. The plurals look quite normal, mishalchim and mishalchot. So we find two forms in Tanakh in Genesis 43:4. Im yeshcha mishaleach et achinu itanu. So the boys are talking to their father Jacob about going down to Egypt. And they're saying, uh, if, if you can, if it's in you, to be the sender of our brother with us. Remember, they needed to take Benjamin with them. In 1 Samuel 6, 3, we see a plural form, Mishal Chim. In 1 Samuel 6, 3, they're talking about, the Philistines are talking about sending the ark back to Israel. And so, and they said, if you are sending Mishal Chim, the ark, the God of Israel, al tishachlu. Don't send it empty. Remember, they added all kind of gifts for it. We'll look at a lamed hey verb, kisa, which means to cover. And if you remember the verbs that we had ending in hey, in the pa'al, they take a segel. The masculine takes a segel instead of a tsere. So we have the same rule here, mechase. The feminine in the pa'al takes a kamatz, same here, mechasa, and then the plurals lose their he altogether, mechasim, mechasot. So we have a few forms that we can find. In the instructions dealing with the sacrifices, it talks very specifically about the chelev ha-mechase et ha -kerev. This is the fat which covers the insides. There's a very specific piece of fat that covers, I think, the liver and the kidneys or something like that. And it's talking about this very specific piece. Achilev ha The fat which is covering. It's doing the covering. In Isaiah 11.9, we see the masculine form here talking about as the knowledge of the Lord, of Yehovah, covers the earth, kamayim layam mechasim, the plural waters, mechasim, they are covering the sea. Here is a feminine plural from Ezekiel, talking about the living creatures which surround the throne, and it's talking about how their wings are covering different things. And the last phrase is ushtayim, Mechasot et giviotehenna. The two of the wings are covering. Wings is feminine, as are most dual body parts. They are covering their bodies. So now we'll move on to the hefeel.
uh, which is spelled all these various ways. And the he feel form is a causative form. That means it will cause something to happen. For example, if we take the verb root bo, which means to come, in the pa'al, in the he feel, it becomes a v to bring. So if I cause my book to come to class, that means I have brought my book to class. Very early in Genesis, we see this root, badal, uh, bet dalid lamed. It appears mostly in the he feel. One of the characteristics of the participle he feel is going to be this yud, which is inserted between the second and third letters. So this is a very, it's a solid root. None of the letters change. You're going to see, remember, all those five binyanim, the pl, the hefil, the pu'al, the hofal, and the hitpa'el. In participle, they are always going to begin with mem. So we see this here beginning with mem, and we have this form mavdil. It has the m prefix and the yud, what we would call infix, inside. The feminine form of all he feel verbs always takes the form that looks like the lamed he verbs. In other words, they get a kamatz and a he. There's never any two vowels and a tav at the end. It always ends in this kamatz and he. So we have the feminine form mavdila. Plurals look normal, mavdilim and mavdilot. You might be familiar with this word. It's where we get the word havdala, which is a separation. It's a period of time after the sundown on uh, Saturday, going into the first day of the week Sunday, where we separate in time the Shabbat from regular temporal time. So we see this in Genesis 1-6, right at the beginning. God is separating between this and between that. And here he is separating between the water and the water, the waters that are above and the waters that are below. In Isaiah 59, 2, we read that the iniquity, the avonot, the iniquity of the people is separating between you and between your God. And we know that sin separates us from God. So this is the masculine plural form, mavdilim. We'll go on to a lamed ayin verb. That means the last letter of the root is ayin. And we see a very similar form, the extra patach on the end. So the masculine form is not mashmi, it's mashmi'a. The feminine form is with the kamatz and the he, mashmi'a. So... The masculine form is pronounced mashmia, and the feminine form is mashmia. So you can hear the difference. The plurals look as we would expect the mem prefix and the normal suffixes mashmiim, mashmiot, and we have that yud infix in the middle. So this root in pa'al, shama, shomea, means to hear or to listen. In this causative form, it means to cause to hear or to cause to listen. In other words, to announce or proclaim. If I'm making a proclamation, I expect that the people will hear it. So a verse um, that you probably know from Isaiah 57, 52, 7. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of the mivaser. This is a PL form, the one who is causing the good news to go out. Mashmia Shalom, announcing peace. Mevaser Tov, announcing what is good. Mashmia Yeshua, he is announcing salvation. Omer saying, Letzion Malach Elohayach. He's saying to Zion, Your God reigns. We see a plural form in 1 Chronicles 15 16. This is David talking to the Levites and the musicians about how they should set up the different instruments. Mashmi'im, that they are causing to hear, that they are sending out. Harim Bakol, to lift up in their voice, listen, enjoy. So he's telling them to sing and 
do the music in a way that's proclaiming the praise. So here is a hollow verb where ayan of the poal, the, the middle letter of the root is uh, vav, which makes it hollow. And we'll see what happens. So just as in the pa'al, we don't see at all the vav, it disappears. But these are the vowel paradigm. <clears throat> we still have the yud, the yud is for the he feel. And we have the mem, but the vowel changes a bit. So the masculine plural is mevi, that would be he is bringing, mevia, she is bringing, mevi'im, and mevi'ot. It's very, very regular. In Genesis 6, 17, God is speaking and he says, I, and behold, I, may be, I am bringing the flood of water onto the earth. In 1 Kings 17, we see Elijah and he is hiding out and the ravens are bringing him food. Ha'orvim mivi'im lo lechem. It's in the present tense, in the participle tense. Yutse is an example of a drop letter imperfect, and you, you are well familiar with this verb. In the pa'al, it means to go out. In the hefil, it means to cause to come out, to bring out. And you know this from the blessing, hamotzi lechem min haaretz, the one who is bringing out the bread from the earth. So verbs that begin with yud specifically as the drop letter imperfect have a special rule where that yud becomes a cholem vav in the participle he feel. So instead of miyitze or mitze or something with no yud at all, we get that cholem vav, motzi. This is the masculine singular, I am bringing out. The rest of the forms follow, the feminine is motzia. The masculine plural, motzi'im, and motzi'ot. This is the participle form. You see it other verbs that begin with yud, including yashav, to sit, and so forth. Some examples from Tanakh in Exodus 6-7, and this is so typical. When we think about God, and we think about his great creation, and things, wonderful, amazing things that that he made for us and for our benefit and even for our enjoyment and all the marvelous works that he does. But so many times he specifically defines himself as the one who brought us out of Egypt. As it is here, Ani Yehovah Elohechem, I am Yahweh, your God, Hamotzi Etchem Mitachat Sivlot Mitzrayim. I am the one who is bringing you. Hamotzi, the one who is doing the action. Remember, the he is a definite article. That means we're dealing with a person. The one who is bringing you out from under the burdens of Egypt. Second Chronicles 9, 28. We're talking about Solomon. And he is bringing out the horses from Mitzrayim. Okay. That's two binyanim. Uh, next time we'll move on to a different binyan. We're going to stay in the participle until we finished all the binyanim, and then we'll go on to something else. So as you continue to study, I pray that you be blessed. Remember to see metainayim al hashemayim. Keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.